been wanting to do this one for a while. If you've not heard of Bitcoin, you really need to. And I know you might think it's kind of weird, but when you understand it, it becomes fascinating. Eric Voorhees has been one of the entrepreneurs in Bitcoin, started with many Bitcoin businesses, now in Denver with Shapeshift. Do I have that one right? Yeah, Shapeshift. And what does Shapeshift do, if you had to explain it right off the bat? Shapeshift is an uh, exchange for digital currencies. Um, so beyond Bitcoin, there are hundreds of others now. Um, so we're kind of like a travel X at the airport, but instead of government money, we exchange cryptocurrencies. All right, so if you're into cryptocurrencies, this is a good way to do it. So let's do the thing about cryptocurrencies. Let's have this conversation, like we're doing it for the very first time. The idea of the American dollar has always been cool. You have it and you feel like you got a dollar. And it used to be for a long time it was actually worth something. It was a silver certificate or perhaps it was worth a certain amount of gold. So it was a note. It wasn't just a dollar, it was mm -hmm. a note. You go over to the Federal Reserve and go, here's my five spot, I want my ounce of, ounce of silver and they give you, and it, so it was limited. That's no longer the case. And the American dollar, like most other currencies, just kind of float. They're not attached to anything. And so they can be inflated. You know, we have, what, three times as many dollars floating around as we did six years ago. So it's, it's a faith-based thing. Would that be a good way to put yeah, most dollars, um, most currencies? I, I think most people don't realize that, a lot of people in the U.S. don't realize that the dollar is not backed by metals anymore. A lot of people still think it is. They think that when you put your dollars in a bank, it sits in a bank vault, safely held until you pull it out again. They have no idea how that money is created or that the U.S. dollar actually has only been in existence since 1971 when it was severed from gold. All right, so, you know, we see the, the, the Deutsche Mark before World War II and we see the inflation. We see the Zimbabwe dollar and, you know, people are using millions of them to get a loaf of bread. But we don't feel that way about the American dollar because we have the Federal Reserve. Their job is to make sure that it doesn't work. And it seems, it seems to work. But yeah. what, well, they, what is your concern the, about, about what we call fiat currencies? The Federal Reserve has been uh, less irresponsible than many other governments around the world when it comes to printing of money. But they're, uh, they're really no different. I mean, these central banks are set up in order to give governments another way to fund themselves. They can raise money through taxes. They can raise money through debt, through bonds. But that isn't enough, right? So how do they make up the difference? Well, they, they print money. And if they do it slowly enough, people don't really understand what's going on. But sometimes, if they're in a lot of debt, they have to print quickly. And that's why you find governments in debt and they just print themselves out of debt. Inflation happens and it can be really ugly. Mm -hmm. And it can lead to world wars and all that other good stuff. But people want to buy and sell things. So they want to trade things of, of value. So we can use a gold coin, but breaking up a gold coin and giving you a fraction of it is yeah. a pain. So we, we, we do it with, with dollars. Bitcoin is a digital currency. Mm -hmm. Explain it in the most simple terms. Well, first of all, dollars are a digital currency as well. 98% of all dollars are just digital account balances in banks. So the fact that Bitcoins are digital is not what makes them unique. What makes them unique is that, uh, first of all, they have a limited number. There are only 21 million Bitcoins that can ever exist. Uh, and second of all, there's no central party that controls them. So they are not created by a bank, by a company, they are created through a software protocol in a decentralized manner around the world. So you, you say this so calmly because you deal with this and it's done very well for you over the years and the companies you've started. But the, the two things you've just said are mammothly revolutionary. Yeah. The idea that there is a currency or uh, that cannot be inflated, the way that this shared program works, there will only be these many. Mm -hmm. They cannot be inflated. Right. So it's much more like old dollars that were connected to coins, except there's not actually connected to anything physical, but that you couldn't, you couldn't inflate it, mm -hmm. you couldn't get more of them uh, just by printing it. They had to be limited. This is limited. Mm -hmm. So if a currency, ours anywhere around the world, goes crazy and goes Zimbabwe, and mm -hmm. I've got a hundred trillion dollar Zimbabwe note, yep. I bet you have a few of those yourself. Yep. Or Venezuela right now. Venezuela right mm -hmm. now. There will only be this many Bitcoins. And mm -hmm. if you have one, you have one of 200 million. Yeah, 21 million. But 21 million. Yes, they are limited in supply, and that, along with their other attributes, makes them good as a means of exchange. So people are using them for that reason. And the other part of it is that you move them digitally. Now I think mm -hmm. people might have a hard time with that because they would think about this, yeah. but kids today are there zapping money with Well, and people had this. a hard time with email too, right? They would be used to writing letters to each other and 
putting a stamp on the envelope and writing it out right. and going down to the street and putting it in a box and three days later it shows up. That's kind of how people's money transfers work now. You have to go down to the bank, you fill out these forms, three days later it shows up in another bank somewhere. But, but why? Why can't money move as fast as, uh, as information on the internet? Because it's all digital already. Uh, Bitcoin actually just lets you move money as easily as you can move email. Now you say money, but really you're talking about puka beads or, or stones or whatever you want to be money. In this case, it is a digital equation that, uh, that you have and you can split it up and you can send it back and forth almost free of charge. Yeah, Bitcoins are just ledger entries in a large shared ledger. So if I say that I will send one of my Bitcoins to you, the whole ledger around the world updates that I have one fewer and you have one more. Uh, and it's really as simple as that. I'm not actually passing you something, I'm just updating the ledger. Do you understand how dangerous this is to two different very powerful entities? One, governments, because they want to be able to have their fiat currency mm -hmm. um, and the, control that, and two, financial institutions who they get their money by exchanging those, those dollars back and forth and lending them to you and taking them here and putting them over there. If, if we can do that without MasterCard and Visa, um, th this could underpin everything. Yeah, um, Bitcoin will absolutely change how a lot of financial service companies work. It doesn't mean banks will go away. It just means that the services they offer will be different. Just as the internet changed a lot of uh, traditional businesses, didn't make them go away necessarily. It just changed how they operated. It'll be the same with financial institutions. I've, I've heard people say this, and I said it myself, but you're not buying anything. There's nothing there, there. You don't even have a stock in something that's there. You're buying a piece of something that doesn't exist. Well, it does exist, it's just digital. But really, it's more, uh, it's more real than dollars because dollars are also digital and they can be created uh, with no limit out of thin air via a central bank, uh, just a group of people who decide to make it. Bitcoin is much more real than that because it cannot be created out of thin air. There's a limited supply. so. People shouldn't be scared that just because something is digital means it's not real. We use digital things all the time, and they're very real. We use email all the time, right. and You're, it's and not it, really it, there. An email message is a real thing, right? You, right? you actually communicate with the email message. With Bitcoin, you're actually sending value around. The fact that it's digital means it's new and interesting and fun to learn about, it doesn't mean it's not real. When you got involved in Bitcoin, what was a Bitcoin worth in, a, in US dollars? Uh, it was about $5 at the time, that and, was 2011. And today? Uh, about $380. And for a while, when, when people really got psyched about this, it peaked at about, what, $1,000, $1,100? $1, $1, $1, yeah, $1,100 back in December of 2013. So it's gone through four or five of these large sort of speculative bubble cycles. And uh, each time people get very interested in it when it spikes and then they get upset when it crashes. Why is, there, why is it so volatile compared it's, to... It's volatile because it's small. It's a small market right now and it's either going to take over the world of finance or it's going to crash and go to zero. It's sort of a binary proposition. So Why do you say that? Why will it either take over finance or just go away of Betamax recorders? Because it does things so differently that, uh, in my opinion, so much, so much better than normal money, um, it'll be adopted over time until it becomes the normal way that people transact value. Um, but it is still an experiment. It could fail for any number of reasons. and so. Those two outcomes uh, you know, mean that if it looks like it's failing, people sell it. If it looks like it's gaining a lot of traction, people buy it. And over time, it's become more stable. Just like any asset over time, people start trusting it and uh, it, it becomes more stable than it used to be. Now, y you've made a lot of money in Bitcoin. I've made a little bit. You've made a lot of it. All right, you're, 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 doing, you're doing pretty well. Um, you're bullish on this. Yeah, but I think it's important to treat Bitcoin differently. It can be thought of as an investment if you're going to speculate on it and hold it and, and ride the wave of volatility. But that's not how most people should think about it, right? How should I think about it? Uh, as a means of exchange, right? If you have an employee in China and then you need to pay them $100 for some freelance work, you can send it with Bitcoin and not pay any fees and it can be there in five minutes from your cell phone as opposed to a bank which will take you know, $20 to send it and it'll take a week to get there. That's using it, but if if the Chinese guy on the other end sells it right away, no one's holding the Bitcoin, so there's no volatility risk, but you've used it to move money across the world. That's, you just said something that's, that's huge, and I don't know if, if, if people get it. So, Western Union, 
-hmm. There are people who go get money, bring it to Western Union so that they can send it back to their family, maybe in Mexico, maybe in China, maybe someplace, and they pay a pretty substantial fee. Mm -hmm. They could do the same thing, but buy Bitcoin instantly, or near instantly, mm -hmm. send it over to wherever, and then that person changes it for drachma or whatever it is yep. that they want. So this is a way to send money mm -hmm. virtually, instantly, and almost for nothing. Yeah, and, and why wouldn't people use it, right? It's only because it takes a while for people to understand how it works, and it's, it's new. The internet didn't become adopted overnight. It took 20 years before it became ubiquitous, and Bitcoin's on its sixth year, so we're still in the early days. If this goes the way you hope it goes, what's the value of Bitcoin, a Bitcoin, five years from now? If it hasn't failed. If it hasn't failed. Uh, and it let's certainly just say, could fail. Either, either, let's just say it hasn't failed. It hasn't failed. It just hasn't failed. What's it, what do you think In five years, it'll be, I would guess, at least $10,000. I would put the long-term price at ten dollars to $100,000 per coin, which sounds uh, crazy until you realize there's only 21 million of these, and if a world of billions of people are using them, some napkin math will, will lead you to some pretty crazy price predictions, right? Or it'll fail. Or it'll fail. Or it'll fail. Um, there are other cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. So Bitcoin is kind of the 800-pound gorilla, mm -hmm. but there are hundreds yep. of Bitcoin-like startups. Um, do those? Do they all fail, or does one pop out and, and become, become there's, something? There's not really a reason for lots of different forms of money to exist, it, unless the different forms have different attributes that make them good for different things. So some of the different cryptocurrencies are more private. Some of them are more stable. Some of them have sort of advanced scripting languages that can allow you to do interesting things programmatically. So if they have different features, they can coexist with Bitcoin. But it's uh, absolutely sort of a, a Wild West time of experimentation and people are you know, creating all sorts of interesting uh, So if, any, if somebody had 100 bucks and they wanted to put it on the roulette wheel, um, would they buy a Bitcoin? Would they buy something else? Uh, well, Bitcoin is the most conservative bet if you're going to put money into the crazy world of cryptocurrency. Um, people want to learn more about this. And it, is, yeah. it really is, it, it sounds ridiculous at first, but the more you, you kind of study currencies and take a look at it, it starts getting very fascinating. Where do they go? What, are, what's, what is the 101 course for Bitcoin? Um, I would say start at Bitcoin.com. That's a good resource. Um, but you can just Google it online. There are lots, you know, lots of information out there. Just uh, my recommendation is to spend a lot of time learning about it. You have to use it safely. It requires some personal responsibility. Um, personal responsibility? Yeah, if people aren't okay there's, with that, then... There's no FDIC for Bitcoin. Uh, no, not yet. Point taken. But there is insurance privately done. Thank you so much. We'll do this again sometime. I want to talk. Listen for me on KHOW Radio. Tell a friend, and we'll see you next week.